beautiful people, what is up and welcome back to my channel. I am Jamila and I love all things beauty. I love all things makeup, I love all things skincare, and I especially love sharing my tips and tricks for how to find high-end and luxury beauty products at bargain prices. If that sounds like something you're interested in, I would absolutely love if you would consider subscribing and joining the fam. Okay guys, I am back. And I know you're probably like, but where did you go? <laughs> Truthfully, I haven't filmed in like three weeks. I had been doing a lot of batch filming and had all those videos going up because I had my cousin's wedding to go to, then I got sick. So I haven't filmed in a while, so this is actually the first time in a very long time that I'm sitting down in front of the camera. And it feels good. It feels good. And today I'm coming with a review of the Hallow Bean palette. Now this is the second iteration of the Butte Bean and Shroud Cosmetics collab. The first one was It's Freaking Bats, which got rave reviews, so they have a second iteration. And I'm really excited to give this my first impressions thoughts. Now, I will say when I tried the It's Freaking Bats palette, I did have, I don't even want to call it an issue because I've used this like two, three times and each time, like it didn't really agree with my eye. I had a bit of like a reaction and I, I'm not sure if it was from the palette or from something else. So I'm not holding it against it. Um, but I am going to dive into this and like, you know, open-minded everything. So it is the same size as It's Freaking Bats in terms of um, size. It is a nine pan palette. The packaging is pretty identical to the palette. The only difference is on the palette, it just says, hello friends. On the back of the box, you'll get ingredients, shade names, and additional product details. So on the box, it does say that this was made in the US. Um, it has a 12 month shelf life, and it looks like this is also vegan and cruelty free. Now, standard operating procedure here. I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of product details. We'll dive into some live swatches and then we'll end with this quick eye look and my first impressions thoughts on this palette. So like I said, it is a collab between uh, Shroud Cosmetics and Batty Bean. On the Shroud Cosmetics website, it says that Batty Bean's vision for this palette was Halloween, but make it grunge. And we think we nailed it. The Hollow Bean palette is sure to charm your spooky soul with five buttery mattes, three magical multi-chromes, and one delicious duochrome. We carefully created this, curated this palette to pair perfectly with our first collab with Batty Bean, It's Freaking Bats, so you can mix and match to your heart's content. So, like they said, it was designed to work well with the It's Freaking Bats. Anyways, here is the palette. Here is this stunning, gorgeous color story. Again, nine shades. And for comparison, I will hold up the It's Freaking Bats so you can see both of these palettes. There you go. All right, so without delay, let's just dive into some quick swatches. So I'm actually gonna do this by formula. Um, and yeah, we're just gonna go from there. And excuse my voice, I know I probably sound a little bit off, I'm still kinda sick but I really wanted to film this, so here we are. So first it says that there are five buttery mattes. So let's start with the mattes first. So here are the first three mattes. So we have Ghastly, a cool toned purple matte. Crypt, a classic Dijon mustard yellow matte. It's showtime. A grungy slime green mat. So that's the first three mats. Okay, here we have the last two matte shades. Losers Club, a perfect burnt orange mat. And Wicked, a deep murky yet vibrant green mat. These actually have real good pigment to them, and they do feel on the dry side which is interesting because they call it buttery mattes, but it not but not that dry means bad, you know what I mean? Because actually for me, drier shadows are easier to blend. Just saying. Okay, next let's go into the multi-chrome. So it says that there are three magical multi-chromes. So here we have the three multi-chrome shades. And this shade here, Black Flame, is the star of the show. Let's see if I can... Yeah, that might be a little hard to see. Anyways, let me swatch these three for you guys. So first up we have Afterlife. It is a metallic multichrome that shifts from burnt orange to copper to gold. Then we have Black Flame, which is a sparkling black-based multichrome that shifts from purple to orange to yellow to green. 
And lastly, we have Ghoulish, which is a sparkling white multichrome that shifts from gold to green to blue to purple. And the last shade in the palette is the dual chrome, and that is Woodsboro. So here we have here we have the Woodsboro shade. And it is described as a vibrant duochrome that shifts from orange to gold. So here are all of the shades. Now, let me just say something really quickly about these, these swatches. I think the matte swatch really well. Honestly, the three multi-chromes that they have, I only think that the shade Black Flame is like a true multi-chrome. With the Afterlife shade, I honestly don't see the shifts in this. Maybe couple to green but that's about it so i think it's a bit of a stretch for them to call it a multi-chrome because i don't see the shifts and that white shade i see like two two shifts maybe so that feels more like a dual chrome as well woodsboro which is this orange shade which is supposed to be the dual chrome also can't really see a shift so i don't know some of these descriptions feel like a stretch because i don't see the shifts in them but maybe somebody else will so again here's one final close-up look of all of the swatches of this palette and without further ado, let's dive into this eye look. Okay, so now that we've done all of the product details and you guys have seen swatches, let's dive into application. Now, this looks pristine because I'm doing the look before I actually swatch. So, I'm going in real blind. I have no idea how this is gonna look on the eyes, but I'm quite excited. So, I really, really wanna play in the multi-chrome and kinda like stick in this side this side of the palette. So first things first, I'm gonna go into this kind of mustard shade, Crypt, and I wanna put that into the inner part of the eye as my first transition shade. Okay, that's deeper than I thought it was gonna be. Not bad, just deeper. Be true, this life, back when we were falling. I know you need out sometimes, head on the Next, I'm gonna go into the green and I'm gonna actually put that into the second half of the transition area. The shade is called It's Showtime. It looks pretty bright and I'm hoping that this does add a little bit of brightness. Honestly, I didn't expect that Crip shade to be that dark, um, but it's okay. This look is gonna be a little bit grungy today. I kind of knew that going in. Like, yeah, maybe it's the primer that I put down because that doesn't look like the shade of the pan. Well, not the green, at least, Crypt. I'm still looking at this Crypt shade and I'm like, this doesn't look like the shade in the pan. And now that this green is next to it, it's, I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Like it was yellow in the pan. Why is it like a green brown on my eyes? I think it has to be the primer that I put on because it was like, it, it is a tinted eyeshadow base. Maybe that reacted with the shade and is giving it this color. Then I'm gonna take my first brush. I'm gonna actually clean that off. And then with that first brush, I'm gonna go into the darkest shade in the pan, Wicked. It looks like a black. It's actually a deep green, very, very deep green. Picking up a little bit of that on the brush, and I'm gonna put that into the outer part of the eye. And then lastly, I'm gonna apply the multi-chrome all over the lid. I don't know if you can see the shift, really. But I'm gonna go in with the brush first. I'm gonna use my Unit 308. This is from the Orange Brush Series. And I'm going to apply that all over the lid. I wanna see how it picks up with a brush, and then we'll go in with my finger if it doesn't do what I need it to do. Ooh, that's a lot of pickup, okay. Okay, this is picking up really well. I don't think I'll need my finger at all. Also, this is 
stunning. Okay, you can already tell I am loving the way this is looking. This is giving me witch, goddess, voodoo queen. Okay, okay. Okay, I love where this is, but I want a little bit of brightness. Like I really thought that that first shade was gonna give me a little something something, but since it didn't, I'm gonna have to add something else. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with this copper shade here and I wanna add a little bit to the top parts right here just so that it can add a little, add a touch of brightness. I need, a, I need to brighten this up a little bit, just a hint. So I'm picking up a little bit of that Afterlife shade and I'm just adding that to the top here. I know you need out sometimes, head on the glass by traffic lights. These shadows are soft. And because I'm a psycho, I'm gonna clean off my brush and I wanna brighten it up just a touch more. So I'm gonna go into Ghastly, which is the even brighter orange, and I wanna put that in the innermost part. Then connect that to that copper shade. Picking up a little bit of that. I'm just. Okay, I'm gonna stop right here. I'm gonna do a little bit of blending and cleaning up, and then I will come back and show you guys my finished look. Okay guys, I'm back and this is the final look and I like it, I like her, she, she cute. So let me just quickly tell you how I finished up this look. So for the waterline, what I ended up doing was I went in with this shade first, then I deepened it up in the outer part with this shade. I put this in the first half of the waterline and then I went in with this shade as my inner corner highlight. So I've used pretty much every single shade in this palette with the exception of the deep blue shade here. That's the only one I haven't touched so far. Now, before I give you my first impressions thoughts, let me just tell you what I'm wearing on the rest of my face very quickly. So I am using the House Labs foundation. So far, I really like this. This is my first time trying it out today, so I'll let you guys know how this wears, and I might do a dedicated video on this. For my bronzer, I went in with the Nabla bronzer. I haven't used this in a minute and a half. And I actually started off with this bronzer, which has a very, I don't wanna call it putty-like texture, but like a gelée kind of texture. And I topped that over with this from Bare Minerals. It's their invisible bronze um, powder. So I combined both of these for my bronzer. This one has a little bit of a shimmer to it, which I kind of like. For blush, I'm using my Pretties For Your Face blush. This is in the shade Bittersweet. Gorgeous, gorgeous orange. Really good for kind of like the Halloween look. And then for my highlight, I went in with my Charlotte Tilbury Magic Star Highlighter. Gorgeous, just like a gorgeous gold highlight. So that is the face. So my first impression thoughts. I like this. I actually found that the shadows performed really well. The mattes blended really easily. Um, those shimmers were buttery soft, picked up so nicely with a brush, had no issues with it. The one thing that threw me for a loop was the shade Crypt, which looks like a mustard yellow kind of shade. But once I put it on my eyes, it looked green. Well, the color changed and I wasn't really sure what was happening. I do think though that it might just be the primer that I put down because it is a tinted primer, because it has that kind of yellow brownish color to it. It might have affected how that shade shows up. So I'm gonna try this again with like a clear primer, see how that works and I'll let you guys know if that is a shade you wanna be mindful of if you have a deeper complexion. But overall, I am really excited to have this. 
really think that this actually pairs quite well with the first iteration. It's freaking bats. Um, I think you can mix and match if you really wanted to. Um, let me show you guys it together. So here are both of these together. I think these are really great palettes to mix and match. And I think that the shadows in here are removable. So you can actually, you know, take out and create your own custom palette. Now, this is currently out of stock, but they are restocking on October 15th, uh, which is honestly like a couple days from now. So hopefully I'll have this up and post it before <laughs> they restock so you can pick this up if you were interested. Um, and that's it. That's it for me, guys. Let me know down in the comments below if you enjoyed this, today's video, if you're planning on picking up this palette, if you already have it, what your thoughts are. Leave all of that in the comments down below. As always, I love you guys. Thank you so very much. Don't forget to subscribe on your way out. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. You know the deal. And as always, I'll catch you guys in my next one. Bye.